Welcome to St. John's and Church at Home, and welcome to any guests watching this service. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The other day, in a press conference, the Prime Minister Scott Morrison said that he believed that Australia was definitely on the road back now. We'll try and get to back to some type of normal, he said. That's certainly good news, and we have much to be thankful for in Australia. So how are you going on the way through the COVID-19 pandemic for almost two months now? Has it been an easy or a difficult time? While we may be physically isolated, we are not alone. Today, we hear Jesus' word for troubled hearts. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is with us on the way through this, and the way out, and the whole of our lives, through to our eternal home. That's the good news we celebrate in today's worship. A welcome, Pastor Andrew. Jesus said, I am the way, come. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth, come and receive. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life, come, receive and respond. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You might like to light the Easter candle that you made for Easter Sunday as a reminder of the presence of Jesus with us today and our unity as those who have been reborn into his body through his resurrection. The last time we could gather together in our church buildings was on Sunday the 15th of March. That's seven Sundays ago. We miss the space where we've worshipped over many years. Yet what we've learned over this time is that the church is far more than a building. It's the people of God wherever we are, worshipping God not just on a Sunday, but every day in all that we do. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, tells us that we are living stones, being built into a spiritual house, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. And that's because Jesus is the living stone, the chosen and precious cornerstone, the solid foundation on which we can build our lives. Let's celebrate that Jesus is the precious cornerstone as we sing the hymn.
Jesus today tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the foundation on which we can build our lives. We haven't always taken his word seriously. There are times when we've built the house of our lives on the shifting sands of our own achievements and circumstances, only to watch it come tumbling down around our ears time and again. When that happens, we need to know that we can come back to God. Let's use the words of today's psalm to remind us of God's unfailing love. These words come from Psalm 31. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Peace in Christ. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. We so lightly value our relationship with God and we put our own needs and desires first. But God doesn't value us lightly. His unfailing love means that we can turn back to him. So let's come before God to confess our sins in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's pray together the words on the screen. Living God, we confess that we have not lived in the light of the resurrection. We have sinned against you in what we have thought, said and done. Forgive us, loving Lord, when we have strayed from your way. Forgive us for the times our lives have not been shaped by your truth. Forgive us for denying your life in us and others by the way we have lived. In the name of Jesus, the way, the truth and the life, we pray. Amen. You might like to pause the video here and spend some time reflecting on the specific things you want to confess to God. Hear the good news. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in Jesus. For whoever trusts in him will not be put to shame. Our cry for help has been heard. Now we are God's people and have received mercy. So in Jesus' authority and in his word, I forgive the sins of all of you who repent and believe in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. Let's give thanks to God for his love and mercy. Gracious God, you are the rock of our lives. You, your strength sustains us. Your power delivers us. Your mercy brings forgiveness to us. We come to you in adoration, praising you that our whole life is in your hands, held, sustained and protected. Glory be to you, merciful Lord, glory, honour, majesty and worship in the name of your Son, our Redeemer. Amen. Today is Mother's Day. We give thanks to God for the gift of our mothers who gave us life, who nurtured us and cared for us, not just when we were little, but also as we've grown up. They had a listening ear and wise words for us. We've asked some members of the St John's community to answer this question. What do you thank God for when you think of your mother? You might like to reflect on the same question in your household today also. When I think of my mum, I'm thankful to God for love and joy and kindness. I'm really thankful for music and opportunities to learn. I'm thankful that my mum knows how to cook and taught me how to cook um, and I'm so thankful to God for that nourishment that he gives us every day. I thank God for the opportunities he's given me through mum. I thank God for the faith that he's given her 
and that she shared that with us children right through life. I thank God that mum doesn't just remind us that we are her children, but that we are also God's children through baptism. And I thank God for giving me a mum who I can share experiences in life with and learn from. I thank God for her many qualities, her unwavering love for her family, her caring nature, her quiet but sure faith in her Lord, her love and commitment to her friends and local communities, the role model that she was for me and my siblings. She was a much loved Nana to our children. We miss her dearly this Mother's Day, but we're glad for the time that we had together. Many of you know my mother, you'll know that there is only one Suwaro. She is silly and can say some random things, but she is the most caring, loving and generous woman that I know, whose faith has really shaped me as a person. She's been an incredible support for Steph and I, and we thank God for her, especially today. I thank God for my mum because she is funny and she is um, kind and, I, and she is also... Um, she also gives me the best hugs. When my mum was only four years of age, her own mother died, leaving behind her dad and six children. Despite this, my mum grew up to be the most beautiful, positive, resilient, caring and happy human being um, that I was so blessed to have as my mum. I thank God when I think of my mum for her love for Jesus, for her faith, for her love for my dad, brother, sister and I and her love for the extended community in which she lived. I thank God for her gift of hospitality, which she shared with so many, so generously. This led to the most beautiful, happy family home. Thank you, God, for my mum. The Bible reading for the day comes from John, chapter 14, verses 1 through to 9. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. This is the word of the Lord. I wonder if you know what one of these things is. It's a street directory and once upon a time every car used to have one. This was the only way that you could find your way around. Without one of these, you were pretty much lost. We don't use street directories a lot these days. Many of us have sat-navs in our car or Google Maps. We can use our mobile phone, we can punch in an address and uh, Google will take us automatically to where we need to be. Problem with Google sometimes though is while you know where the destination is, you don't really know the way. You're relying on Google to tell you and sometimes Google takes you in very strange directions. In one sense, I think I might prefer a street directory because you have to do the hard work. Not only do you need to find an address and then find it on the map, but you need to look at all the other maps in between and you tend to learn the journey. You actually know where you're going. 161 The Parade, Norwood. Press go. Head west on Marlborough Street towards Duffy Street, then turn right onto Duffy Street.
We've been on the COVID-19 journey for almost two months now. At the beginning, we had no idea where we were heading. We were worried. We wondered what the journey was going to be like. And it hasn't been easy. We've faced a whole lot of restrictions, uh, physical isolation in our home, social distancing. We wonder for how much longer life is going to be like this. In 400 metres, turn left onto National Highway A17. Thank God the restrictions that we've faced have actually been doing their job. Infection rates are falling and in our state for a couple of weeks now, no infections at all. But that doesn't mean that we're not frustrated. It's Mother's Day this weekend. Are we able to go and see our mum if she's older? If we have younger children, can we take them to see our grandmothers? How far along the COVID-19 road are we actually? Are we there yet? Are we at the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? In a recent press conference, Prime Minister Scott Morrison said he believed that Australia was on the road back from tackling the coronavirus, with the promise that some restrictions will be starting to lift. The Prime Minister pointed to the reopening of elective surgery, schools starting to come back, certainly here in South Australia, and he said it wouldn't be long before businesses, some businesses currently closed, were opening again. We're definitely on the road back now, the Prime Minister told the ABC. The way in was deeply concerning. The way through is challenging. Now we're starting to talk about the way out, the long way out. The question is, what way are we going to live through and thrive in on that long way out. In today's Gospel reading, we're taken back to the time before Easter, less than a day before the cross. But only Jesus himself knows what lies on the way immediately ahead of him. So he explains to his disciples both the way that he will travel and the way that this will also impact on the journey ahead for his disciples. First thing Jesus does is washes his disciples' feet. He shows them that he is a servant king. He is no royal bully. He then announces three things. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. This glory is the fulfilment of his mission to show the world how much God loves it. As Jesus is crowned, as king on the throne of his cross. Secondly, and as a consequence, Jesus says to his disciples, my children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me. Where I am going, you cannot come. And thirdly, to cap it off, Peter, you who are the leader of the pack, you will deny that you even know me three times before the rooster crows in the morning. I'm not surprised then that the next words that Jesus speaks to his disciples are these. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And it's a word to each one of them individually. Jesus is saying, look, I know your heart. I know your circumstances. I know the path ahead of you. But I'm saying to you, do not panic. Stay calm. Yes, there is a hard road ahead, but you're not going to walk that road alone. I will walk with you. Now, Jesus himself knows what it's like to be troubled. That's the word that is used of Jesus when he stands in front of Lazarus' tomb. It sums up all the heaviness and grief that he feels and which we feel too in the face of death but perhaps also the heaviness, the grief that we now feel as we wonder how difficult and how long the way back to normal might be and even what a new normal might look like. The starting point, Jesus says, is this. Believe into God. Believe also in or into me. Lean into me. Let me take the strain of what you are experiencing 
My father and I, we're in this together, Jesus is saying. My whole life, the way I'm walking, the things I say is all about bringing glory to my father and doing something amazing for all of you and for the world. In my father's house, Jesus says, are many rooms, literally many dwelling places. I want you to think more a mansion than a three-bedroom brick veneer. My father has plenty of real estate and I'm getting a space ready for you. About a year ago, I bought a house. It had bothered me for years that I needed to get a foothold into the housing market and I felt like I was the oldest first home buyer ever. And look, our family home has been a great blessing. But if I thought that taking this step and buying a house would banish all the worries about the future in my life, I was wrong. What happens if the pandemic drives real estate values down? What about how much I still owe on my loan? Now, bricks and mortar might indeed be a good investment, but they don't provide the eternal security that we crave and which Jesus promises when he says, trust in God, trust also in me. These are the words that I need to keep on hearing day after day. Jesus goes on, I'm going there to prepare a place for you, for you individually. My journey will take me to the depths of the cross and even to hell for you. And then to the heights of heaven again, as I rise from the dead and return to my Father. This is my way. And this will be your way too, because I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you may be where I am. These are certainly powerful and encouraging words, but one of Jesus' disciples, Thomas, has not got a clue about what Jesus is talking about, and he isn't afraid to say so. Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? It's better to be straight and honest than to stay silent and confused. And it's true the disciples don't know the way that Jesus will walk in the next 24 hours. And if that's not clear, nor is everything else. It all sounds like pie in the sky when you die. And Thomas is nothing if not a pragmatist. Thomas wants something concrete. He wants something that works right now, not at some indeterminate time in the future. I really like Thomas' honesty because there are times in my life when I feel the same things. It's a bit like the difference between Google Maps and a street directory. Google Maps makes me feel like I'm some kind of observer on the journey. I know where I'll end up, but I have no idea exactly where I am at this point. With a street directory, I feel more part of it. I get to see each segment of the trip. Perhaps that's what Thomas wants. He wants to know where he and the disciples are right now and where Jesus is for them right now. He wants some help, some guidance. He wants Jesus' presence right now each day. Thomas gets a mind-blowing answer to the question, the big question that he's just asked. Jesus says to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. I'm everything you're ever going to need right now, through the journey of your life, right to the destination, which is my father's house. I am the way, the way to the father, the way home. And the one who is beside you, who dwells with you through each and every step of your way. Jesus can say this because he is the word made flesh who has made his dwelling among us. Jesus has committed himself to experiencing and redeeming our humanity and sharing his relationship with his father, with us as gift. If you want to arrive at God... Jesus is the way. And better than that, Jesus doesn't just point you the way, point you in the right direction. He takes you there personally. We read in the book of Hebrews, brothers and sisters, we have confidence to enter the most holy place 
by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain, which is his body. The way that Jesus did this was to walk the lonely and painful way to the cross. We couldn't walk that way. We had to bail long ago. In and of ourselves, we couldn't love purely. We didn't want to sacrifice. We couldn't serve God with a pure heart. Only Jesus could. Only Jesus did. Jesus forged a new way through his obedient life and his suffering death. He went way down, even into death and into the place of God's judgment against our sin. It's a way that we would never, ever want to go. A way that we will never, ever have to go because of him. Jesus is the truth. In him we know the truth about God, that God is loving and forgiving and merciful. And we also know the truth about ourselves, that we are lost in life without him. That following his way through his word is what a meaningful and fulfilling life is all about. Yes, Jesus is the life, the one who lived fully for us and whose life enlivens us. He accompanies us every step of the journey. We have a permanent home in him with God our Father. It's a place for which the mortgage has been paid in full and where we will never be kicked out. One of the first names given to the early church was the people of the way. The Apostle Paul, actually he was Saul at that point, was on his way from Jerusalem to Damascus to find any there who belonged to the way. Of course, he was there to arrest them. But he wasn't successful in his mission because God pulled him up and set him on a new journey, a journey to share the good news of Jesus. We are people of the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is with us on the way. And the way where we are headed is our home with God permanently, eternally, thankfully. Amen.
Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Let us come to our Heavenly Father with all our troubles and concerns and pray for the church and the world. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that your Son Jesus is the true and living way. We thank you that Jesus walks alongside of us every step of the journey of our lives and is preparing a place for us to be with you forever. Jesus, hear us. You, you are, are the, way. the way. We pray for those who want to find the true and living way, but don't know how. Out for, for ourselves, that we might respond to Jesus as the way, truth, and life, and be ready to share this way with others. In his name, Jesus, hear us. You are the way. God of grace and love, we thank you for all that you have given us. Through the loving care and hard work of our mothers, bless all mothers that their love may be deep and tender and that they may lead their children to know and do what is good, living not for themselves but for God and for others. Jesus, hear us. You are the way. way. We pray for those dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects on our world. Give wisdom to our political leaders. Bring relief to countries where the pandemic is out of control. Keep all health workers safe as they treat those who are sick. Jesus, hear us. You, you are, are the way. way. We pray for those who are troubled today those worried about money, those looking for work, those who don't feel safe and those who are sick. Jesus, hear us. You are the way. We pray for those whose journey of life is testing, those who live in countries where there is war and violence, those who are a long way from family and homes. May they find in you a place to rest. Jesus, hear us. You are the way. Lord Jesus, we pray for all places of need and all people in trouble. We pray for those in the St John's community. For Everard N, Elmore H, Andrew V, Grace B and Jane G. Comfort those who grieve the death of a loved one too. As we make room for them in our prayers, May we make room for them in our hearts. Jesus, hear us. You are the way. Thank you, Father, that you hear us and care for us in all our needs. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the living stone and the cornerstone of our lives. In his name we pray. Amen. Please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours 
now and forever. Amen. Let's now share our Easter hope again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. May God bless you, guide you and direct you. May God bless you and give you strength and the assurance of his love. May God bless you and fill your life with his presence today and always. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. At St. John's, we continue to operate and thank you for your spiritual and practical support. Regular electronic giving is a great way to ensure that we are resourced to continue to do God's work at this time. See the St. John's weekly email or contact the office for further information. Secondly, we meet online for our coffee and chat sessions, 10 a.m. every Sunday. The link is in your weekly St. John's communications email. I encourage you to join your brothers and sisters in Christ for a weekly catch up. And finally, our pastoral ministry student, Tom Kitson from Australian Lutheran College, is leading a four week Zoom Bible study on Wednesday nights in May. The study is called Weird, but don't panic. Weird is about the way that God has called us to be different in good and gracious ways to the world around us. So again, see your weekly St. John's email for details about how to log in or contact the office. As we go, I invite you to bless each other in your household. If you like, you might like to bless one another with these words safely at this time. May God give you peace in your heart and may he fill you with trust in Jesus. Amen.